can you say your whole name and position at Infotech? I'm Dinop Patel. I'm the Chief Product Officer at IOG. Cardano is really about empowerment. Uh, it's about empowering people to be able to access finance and enable access to financial markets. Uh, it's about empowering people to own their identity and own their personal data. Um, it's about empowering people to have a voice in the community that they live in. Right now, over a billion people have no access to, to capital. They're not able to um, go into a bank and open an account and um, you know, get access to a, a normal savings product or, or get access to a loan. Really, what Cardano is doing is providing an alternative for those people who are disconnected from financial markets so that um, they're able to, to access a loan more easily and uh, use that for farming or even educating their, their kids. And the way we're doing this is by uh, basically enabling what we're calling an, an economic identity. This starts with giving people uh, just a normal identity like your government issues, but then you can link with this reputation. So your local shopkeeper knows that you're a trusted person. Your farming cooperative uh, also knows that you've been great at farming and you've been uh, bringing in crops for the last 10 years. Um, so these personal and financial transactions actually tell a lot about your credit worthiness and then this is something that you can then present to formal institutions like banks or decentralized um, protocols like Cardano to actually access financing. So the fourth industrial revolution is upon us. Uh, technology rollout is accelerating around the world. It's going to change the way we we live, we interact with one another. Developing countries really have this opportunity to leapfrog uh, the developed world because um, they don't have to deal with these legacy systems. And uh, developing countries can embrace blockchain projects like Cardano, which are bringing new systems for finance, new systems for governance, new ways uh, to deliver identity, and new ways to create more digital economies. On Cardano, we're taking a multi-pronged approach to smart contracts. Ultimately, uh, users will be able to develop with uh, their language of choice. Uh, initially, we're supporting Plutus, uh, which en enables these enterprise-grade, mission-critical, decentralized applications. Uh, we're also adding uh, DSLs, such as Marlow and Glow. Um, we'll, we'll be accelerating, really, the development of sidechains on Cardano, and what that will do is that it will allow um, developers that have been building Solidity applications uh, to be able to port those across to Cardano and uh, use the tool chain that they're familiar with. Uh, we're also working on Yeli, which will allow us to use everyday languages like uh, C++ and C in the near future. Uh, we have assembled actually one of the best teams in the industry um, we're one of the few companies that are able to build up a blockchain project from first principles. Um, second, it's really about understanding all the stakeholders within the ecosystem. Uh, one of the things I've done is um, reorganize my team so that they're focused on the key stakeholders in the ecosystem. So that includes stake pool operators, it includes exchanges, it includes developers, partners, and also ADA holders. Um, we spend a lot of time uh, looking at legacy systems as well to understand what has worked and what hasn't worked. Uh, we look at our competitors as well and look at you know, how can we improve uh, the status quo. Thirdly, it's about our process. The core tech is built on strong fundamentals. Everything we build is based on peer-reviewed academic research. Um, the engineering process also applies formal methods and property testing. Uh, we look to incorporate our community and users early in the process and um, we run test nets uh, which allow us to get feedback and also validate the research before we push anything out onto mainnet. So it's really about building a strong foundation that others can build on top of, iterate on and expand on. Uh, with Shelly, uh, we've launched uh, one of the biggest decentralized networks. Uh, with Gogan, uh, this adds more capability and, and functionality that now allows 
people to create uh, these enterprise grade mission critical decentralized applications. With Basho, uh, we'll be enabling uh, more scalability and we've actually kicked off uh, our Voltaire era with uh, Project Catalyst. All of this will enable users to create specific solutions for different enterprises and different industries. Certainly we're already seeing mainstream adoption. Uh, countries like El Salvador accepting Bitcoin as legal tender. Uh, we're also seeing enterprises uh, such as Visa, PayPal, um, accepting cryptocurrencies as a form of payment. Uh, definitely Bitcoin is leading the way, uh, but Cardano represents a much greener alternative. Cardano is solving key pain points for mass adoption. Uh, with the Hydra project, uh, we're enabling scalability with potential for up to a million transactions per second. Uh, with the Atala Mirror project, we're enabling um, the ecosystem to better comply with regulation and tra the travel rule. We're also focused on education, so we're partnering together with governments uh, so we can showcase the potential for the technology in being part of their digital transformation uh, strategy. In addition to that, uh, we're also ensuring that you know, Cardano provides a conducive environment uh, for mass adoption, such as enabling stable fees, uh, enabling native stable currency, um, as well. It's also being designed to be future-proof. Uh, we have a, a robust governance system that will mean the Cardano will be there for years to come. So according to Ernest & Young, 75% uh, of enterprises are eyeing public blockchains, but only 7% of them are using it. It comes down to two things, namely security and privacy. In terms of security, Gogan enables the creation of enterprise-grade mission-critical dApps. Uh, we're also creating a robust certification framework for dApps. And we've partnered together with leading firms, uh, Quivic, Twig, RV, and Certic, to create this standard. Uh, in terms of privacy, we're evaluating various uh, Layer 2 solutions, uh, which will allow business transactions to remain private. Uh, so this, this is something similar to what you see with Baseline Protocol. To attract developers, uh, we need to have users. Um, so we've got a number of strategic initiatives where we're focused on onboarding millions of users. A good example of that is the deal we have with the government of Ethiopia to onboard 5 million students with the potential to actually onboard 20 million students over the next five years. Another key thing is we need to make our platform competitive for developers. So we need to make it cheaper, better, faster. Cheaper in terms of transactions, better in terms of uh, functionality such as the level of decentralization, um, security, so the certification framework that will be rolling out, um, scalability in terms of uh, enabling users to also leverage off-chain computation, and faster in terms of um, the ability to process uh, many transactions per second, for example, leveraging Hydra. We also focused on lowering the barriers of entry uh, for developers. So uh, we have a number of educational programs that we've been rolling out, such as the Plutus uh, Pioneer Program. Uh, we've been working with a number of partners who are building out different DeFi use cases. And the goal is uh, that they can contribute these back to the community in terms of source code and documentation. Um, we've also, um, through Project Catalyst, uh, got a fund which uh, has up to a billion dollars in it so to enable this ground up innovation. Um, so it's not just about funding, you can present your idea, um, you'll find a community of people that will help you develop that as a concept and uh, together you can apply for funding and you'll find an ecosystem of mentors that can help you develop your idea and actually realize your, your project. Other initiatives that we're working on is uh, ensuring that when your DAP is ready, uh, we'll have a marketplace uh, that is innovating in terms of app discovery. In addition to that, we also, we've also built this distribution, or multiple distribution channels. Uh, we're already talking to many governments around the world, uh, many telcos. You know, this provides an opportunity to get your application utilized by these potential customers. The Cardano community is very engaged. Uh, of all the 
ecosystems out there. We, we probably get the most uh, contributions from the community. Uh, they're engaged very early on in uh, the test nets that we put out. They're engaged in, in building uh, developer tooling. They don't wait for us to, to do everything. They're working with us step by step along the way. Uh, we want the community to work with us to improve the developer experience. We're working to provide a conducive environment via the Catalyst project and um, in Fund 6, uh, there's $1 million available to building developer tooling. So we want the developers and partners to work together with us to build this critical infrastructure. So within the next 10 years, Cardano will be ubiquitous in our everyday lives, powering our phones, our TVs, our cars. Within the next 100 years, Cardano will hopefully create a new world order where the citizens are in control rather than governments and corporations. Um, as an example, uh, the government of Ethiopia right now are only able to fund 4% of their subsistence farmers. Imagine if we could move that to 20%, the impact that would have on people's lives. So that's what really gets me up in the morning, that we actually have an opportunity to make a big difference in the world.